All righty, again, 10 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. This is the morning drill, and if you're paying attention to uh, what's going on with the, the political debates, uh, Mark, uh, obviously military coming up uh, quite a bit um, in terms of uh, how you take care of vets, uh, how you build a strong military. Uh, but that conversation almost uh, taking place uh, locally, and to help us out with it, uh, we've got uh, from the Titusville Redevelopment Authority, Jim Becker. From the Northwest Commission, Joe Foyce, nice to meet you, and glad you're here this morning. Thanks for having us. All righty. Guys, what's going on? Jim, this is a pretty exciting thing. It's a uh, an interesting piece that we think could have a significant impact uh, with employers around the entire region. Um, through our course of our jobs when the local economic development guys are out there talking to companies uh, talking about expansions talking about needs of the company talks about employees talks about uh, how they're how, how, what they're doing with their efforts I'm trying to, to garner new employees for the company if that's what they're looking for some of the standard refrains that we hear around the region and across the state is uh, lack of skilled workforce uh, soft skills that are, that are missing, you know, work ethic or, you know, uh, drug use or things like that. And you combine that with a with a, a national policy right now that's going to end up putting about a million um, military members separating from all four branches of the service and the Coast Guard within the next four years. So you got wow. a million military members separating. you got a private sector workforce that's looking for skilled labor. How do we put those two pieces together? I'm not good with math. Don't ask me. <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one of the things we did, we uh, and, and Jill can talk a little more in depth about this, but we, we've actually been working with a couple of different organizations. One company that we've partnered with now is Recruit Military. Uh, Recruit Military is a company that uh, is almost preferred uh, through what's called a transition assistance program as military members separate and they're and they're leaving the service they have to go through a program that does everything from helps them write resumes to interview skills taking their acronyms from the military from their military time and converting them to real civilian language wow and, that, and that's yeah. honestly it's a tough transition that's one of the toughest things that I had to deal with when I left the Air Force it's a uh, going from one piece to the other because those things just usually don't translate um, but taking all that, they load these. This company has about eight hundred thousand active military resumes in their system. Wow! And within a hundred miles of Erie, the zip codes within Erie, there's about fourteen thousand active resumes of prior service military veterans uh, with a variety of skill sets. Unfortunately, right now, when you look at it, if anyone goes into the system and looks at Northwest PA, there's a black hole for companies that are hiring because th there, there was a fee associated with um, being able to load jobs for companies uh, or companies loading their positions that they have available that the resumes that are in the system, those people can then look back and find those jobs. So uh, we think we've come up with an idea on how to um, eliminate that black hole, if you will. And uh, Jill, jump in on that one. Yeah, Jill, w w I mean, what, what really grabbed your attention with this? Well, we started having this conversation about a year ago with our economic development partners. And to Jim's point, it was, you know, we have a very low unemployment rate in our region, but we still have a lot of employers who don't, aren't finding the, the, the people to fill the jobs that they have. Um, it's the skill set, it's the work ethic, all of those things. So, um, you know, and, and Jim's a great advocate for veterans as being a retired veteran and talking about you know the skill sets that they bring to the table and their respective authority and all of those other things that would make them great candidates for for business um, so we started having this conversation maybe a, a year ago uh, but the question was how do we find out who those veterans are in our region and connecting them to those businesses and we still struggle with how do we identify the veterans that are active and coming home or if they're already here, if they're unemployed, if they're underemployed, and how do we connect them to, to that uh, workforce. So um, in January, there was a gentleman, Command Commander Embry from the U.S. Navy. He was with the Joint Chiefs of Staff from uh, the Chairman's Office of Reintegration. And we had a conversation about bringing veterans back, identifying who they are, bringing them back, joining the workforce to them. Uh, had some really good discussions, but even at that level, they couldn't tell us 
who are those people in our eight counties wow um, and and how do we connect back to them so that's one of the things that we're working on is trying to build a database finding out who those who those individuals are and how do we um, how do we connect to them so there's there's kind of a two-pronged approach to what we're doing it's working with the businesses and trying to bring that audience to them but finding who those veterans are and making sure that they know what resources are there um, so, so so do you find that each one is equally challenging or is there one part of this that's more challenging than another I, I think identifying the veterans is going to be more challenging for us is has been more challenging because the data just isn't there um, if we do and we've heard that from some of the like the VFWs and the legions yeah. it, folks so have no idea you know these folks are coming back to the communities but not stopping in and, and registering or, or saying you know we're here there's a true disconnect between even the department of defense and the va really well uh, that's not surprising with, with no question and it's i mean the va doesn't know i exist in erie i've been there to get an id card they don't they don't and there's no connection point when you separate that you're you're, you're going to this region if you are um so the thing that one of the pieces of this that we found very interesting, and you know, Pennsylvania is one of the top four states in the country in military recruitment, historically. Hmm. Wow. They're, they're one of the top four states in the country in military, prior service military living in the state of Pennsylvania. So they're leaving here, they're coming back after serving, and nobody knows who they are and where they are. And, and if you take those pieces and put them in play, it doesn't make sense because a lot of times around military installations, you have a lot of retirees. We don't have a large military installation around here. We don't have a Fort Bragg. We don't. We don't have a Lackland Air Force Base. So that you know that that piece of it doesn't make a lot of sense. But they're here, uh, and in all in all age groups. So this is a this is a, a, a way we think if we can connect these dots, um, it, it could be a very advantageous for the for the businesses and quite frankly the veterans uh, for for upgrading the skills. Well, Jill, then. You take a look at uh, the national scene right now, and even the debate last night, military was brought up, uh, how you take care of, of these veterans. Uh, this is this is becoming a pretty big you know discussion. Is this, for you guys, the right time to, to kind of get this message out with, with this conversation taking place? We think it is, and, and to your point, there seem, it seems like vet, helping veterans seems to be the new buzzword, and we don't want to be that flash in the pan. Um, we've had conversations with with veterans groups that say, you know what, this is this it's it's cool to be attached to veterans right now. Um, we don't think that's the case. We're looking at a need from the businesses and, and a skill set that these veterans bring to the table. So we certainly want to make sure that we're matching those things as well as assisting the veterans. So um, you know, it is a two two pronged approach. We're working with. Uh, and meeting with businesses and agencies that assist veterans so we can get the word out that we're, we're starting this. And to Jim's point, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were to go into Recruit Military right now and look in our, the eight counties of the Northwest Commission's footprint, you may not see a lot of businesses participating. So what we're trying to do is get the words out to people like um, those uh, agencies that assist veterans, the VFWs, the, the veterans agencies within the county. And let them know that you know even if you've applied for this and been part of that in the past you'll see after october 1 which is the kickoff for um for this participation you're going to start to see a lot of businesses from the northwest region posting their jobs so it's a two-pronged approach making hmm. sure that the businesses know how to take advantage of what the commission has made available to them as well as veterans who may or may not have had success in the past knowing that that they will see more activity the Northwest Commission is sponsoring a the, the fee, if you will, for a, um, to be able to post for one year unlimited number of job postings for all the companies in Northwest in in the eight county region. Really? Yeah. So we're not going to do it personally, but we are going to host webinars so companies and their HR people can learn how exactly to post these jobs into the system. They'll be out there as many times as they want, as many positions as they want, for the entire eight county region. Um, it's a it, we, we think it's going to have an impact with the num with the sheer numbers of active resumes that are out there, and we think the sheer number of jobs that are going to be posted from all business sectors, all industry sectors, uh, it 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 could be pretty significant. 
we hear again just talking with members of the, the VFW or the Legion that you know these folks come back and sometimes they just they just want to hide. Um, what do you do to sort of say, hey, you know, when you come back here, get into the system, get your name out there. We have good jobs. You're going to be able to to make good money, uh, provide for your family. But this system is set up primarily for. Um, people who are ready to go to work right now, the military veteran that's separating. I mean, the story that I, the, the quick story that I usually tell with this is, I, I mean, I'm familiar with the Air Force, obviously. So if the Air Force, if a young person, man or woman, takes a, a test in, in as a, when they're 18 years old, and because they show an aptitude for mechanical electronics, we make them an F-16 jet engine mechanic. After six or seven months of a technical school, this young person is tearing apart reassembling, quality controlling, with supervision, but a jet engine on a single engine, multi-million dollar jet. If he or she is wrong, it becomes a very expensive lawn dart, okay? So let's say that person separates at 22 years old. They say, you know, I've, I've done my time, I'm getting out. At 22 years old, we're gonna be able to provide an employer four years of annual performance reports on this kid that says he was on, he or she was at work on time. They were drug free. This is what they upgrade training through. This is all the training skills they've been to. This is the leadership they've done. They've been a low level supervisor. They have all the soft skills with uh, esprit de corps and teamwork and team building and you know following direction. Um, if you, if that's not a person that you think you can train within your organization, maybe the problem isn't kid that we're trying to put out there to hire you know and on the second piece of this is that same kid who decides to stay at 20 years and retires gets out at 38 years old I can give you 20 years of annual performance reports wow. that talks about what this person has done over 20 years the positions that they've held that the upgrade training that they've gone to that same kid has now progressed through a f-16 jet engine squadron They've been in charge of not one plane, but 50. They've been in charge of 100 jet engines and maintaining. They've had a couple hundred people working under them. Um, if that's not the person that you need for a mid-level manager spot, who also has mechanical and technical skills on the other side of it, can you train this person in your, your organization in the next 30 to 45 days? We think you can, but connecting these two the job seeker and the job employee, you know, the employer. That's what we hope this this program ends up. Oh, hold on one second, Mark. Uh, this is the Morning Drill on Stream Television and the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. What I was going to ask, you mentioned first of all, it's it's a good program for someone who's been in the military, maybe for one enlistment, maybe someone who's been good uh, throughout twenty years and just coming out of uh, at the end of the career and and going into. Uh, another career after 20 years is there how does this help somebody who may have been out of the military say five or ten years or a little bit more does this help someone who's been away from the military for a while and still looking well they still have those same skill sets from when they were in the training is still in there somewhere you've got you know you have your all the scoffs excuse me soft skills that were in play uh, they, they have all the um, the ability to follow direction, you know, that, that, that piece of their personal resume is still there, regardless if it's five years ago or ten years ago. Um, it's, it's putting those pieces in play, newly in play, to a future employer on, on what they can bring to the table to the organization. So this is a way of taking all of those good skills that are developed in the military, mm -hmm. whether they're fresh or whether they're maybe a little dormant and need to be honed up a little bit. They're, you're saying they're still there and they're still a viable offering. And then making sure that they are presented in a way that the employers, on the other side of this, employers under, need to understand what the military, people who have gone through the military bring to the table. It's not, it, it is those soft skills that they say they're searching for uh, because it's, I mean, they're, they're put, military people are put into a, um, regardless of branch, uh, working under stressful situations, Certainly. you know, long hours and low pay, <laughs> you know. Um, Been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> so it, there, there's all of those 
<laughs> soft skill pieces that they everyone says they need that that we can put in play uh, in and even in the form of resumes to get their name in front of in, you know in future employers how do you let employers know uh, about things like the tap program that you mentioned I went through the tap program when I left in 1998 and found it to be uh, immeasurably uh, invaluable for a lot of different reasons in fact I still tap into things like that from time to time how do you how do you educate employers about those things that the military can do for them I, th I think um, and one of the things that we've done as part of our outreach is to go to Wright Patterson and talk to their transition team and to your point one of the other things that we learned from some of the who have recently separated is when you get to the end of that deployment or you get to the end of, of your term you just want to go home. Yeah. So that true. last six months, you know, you're 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 continuing to do your military job. You're trying to find housing and and maybe moving a spouse or whatever the case may be. So a lot of that transition information is kind of lost. So it's making sure that they have access to that information. And that information, those transition classes are online, um, so you can kind of refresh yourself and make sure that um, that you kind of pick up what you might have lost when it was you know it's just time to go home uh, how do we imp how do we educate employers that's the other outreach piece making sure that employers are posting their jobs in a way that the skill sets that they're looking for or the uh, the meaningful tasks that they need done match up language wise and we, t we talk about this all the time the MOS correct it's one of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, making sure that that is translated well into civilian conversations. So when, when employers are posting jobs, they get the most out of that job posting so that they are attracting the individuals or the, the veterans and making sure that the veterans understand and, and, and it's kind of you know learning a new language. And so that's going to be part of that outreach as well. Joe, you said uh, you, you guys oversee eight counties. Mm -hmm. uh, are, is it different in each county? Are you finding that the, the needs are... Are pretty much the same. The needs are, are, are pretty much the same. We have, we have our eight county region is Erie, Crawford, Mercer, Lawrence, Warren, Forest, Venango, and Clarion. So you you have two very different dynamics as far as the counties, the populations, and the types of businesses. But the needs are all the same. The skill sets that are needed are the same. You may have more of a need in Erie County, um, Warren County. We have conversations with our Warren County counterpart all the time about just the lack of people in that county. Um, so trying to attract people back to our region, making sure that the opportunities are known so that those who may have grown up here or grown up in a place kind of like the Northwest Pennsylvania region know that we're out there and know what we have available to them. It sounds like you really have your work cut out for you. Jim, you mentioned that this is an area in Northwest Pennsylvania that is not a huge military area. I moved up here from uh, Tidewater, Virginia, mm -hmm. which is a huge military area. Spent 10 years outside the military there where the outreach was just fantastic to come up here was kind of stepping into a, a no man's land and it really does sound like you're working hard to overcome that challenge well we are we are not high on any uh, site selectors list for for companies to move um, especially in the lower counties um, but when it comes to employees we we have to attract or try to attract new people to the region and if we are going to try to attract new people to the region, what better group to try to attract than a skilled workforce that have, you know, typically high standards and and you know, a high quality of character than uh, military members that are separating. So what's what's next? What's coming up in the next uh, week or two? Um, the recruit military webinar will take place on Tuesday, the twenty second, at two o'clock. Um, that will give employers the opportunity to learn how to post jobs and then like I said it will go live October 1st we want to make sure that we had all of our employers trained up first so we could take advantage our the the term of our contract right now is 12 months so we're going October 1 to October 1 um, ironically that's manufacturers day so we think it's a great time to oh, kick that off yeah <laughs> um, we will be we will be uh, highlighting that at the Erie Convention Center on Manufacturers Day, we will be talking about and, and sharing information with the manufacturers. Uh, the webinar will teach employers how to post jobs, but we'll also have it taped. So anyone that comes on afterwards, we can send that to them. They get trained up and they can start utilizing that system right away. This is pretty exciting. This is a big thing. Um, I, I don't know. A year from now, are you guys going to be sitting here going... 
we're overwhelmed with. We hope, hope so. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we hope so. It'd be a good thing for everybody, it, not just the businesses. It, it, you know, if we're able to recruit these types of people and their families into our region, it's a win win. I was going to say, this is a great way of, I mean, this is an area that may not have a lot of vets moving here to live, but this certainly opens the door to that, doesn't it? No question. You've got, what, the VA, Erie, and Pittsburgh, and. Mm-hmm. A lot of great jobs around here. And, and to your point, in, in a year, we hope, you know, we're going to we're gonna ask for feedback from those businesses, make sure that we're, we're targeting the right areas, that we're doing what we need to do. We want this to be effective. Um, this, this is the jumping off point for us. Um, to your point, we're not well known. We're Northwest Pennsylvania. If you grew up here, you know how great it is. We want to do some, um, look into doing some marketing pieces to to share with uh, transitioning um, uh, veterans so they know what we have available, not only you know the jobs that we have, but the quality of life and the housing and those other things that, that would be important to anyone who's separating from the military. Excellent. So there's a lot of, a lot of working parts, um, a lot of partnerships have been made, a lot of partnerships need to continue to be made on both sides, on the employment side and on the veteran service side, so we are incredibly busy. Um, I do want to say that if any businesses are listening and want to participate in that web, webinar next week, you can register, you can ask for the registration through nwc at northwestpa.org and we'll send the registration which is simply just gathering the contact information from those businesses so we know who they are. We can um, begin to track and make sure that we're getting the information to them as well as getting feedback. Is it a good experience? Have you had successes with it? If there's something that we need to change within what we're doing and is there more to be done? um, Will you guys come back? Absolutely. All right, Jill, Jim, thank you so much.